World War I, the Great War, the war to end all wars. Fought from 1914 to 1918, this massive conflict primarily between European powers ultimately spanned the globe. These powers were originally divided into the Triple Alliance and the Triple Entente. After the assassination of Ferdinand, the Archduke of Austria-Hungary, a chain of events saw new alliances form. The central powers comprised of Germany, Austria-Hungary, and eventually the Ottoman Empire and Bulgaria battled against the Allies. France, Russia, Britain, Italy, and ultimately the central powers crumbled, but not before years of death on both sides at the hands of advanced weaponry. Due to the enormous numbers of soldiers and supplies needed to aid the war effort, it became necessary to concentrate a country's entire focus on using its people and economy to maintain a presence in the war. Large demand of soldiers and supplies brought on by the total war experienced during World War I led to a dramatic growth of women's involvement in military and industry and helped women achieve better social and economic standing. Leaving to fight in the war, men left many jobs open and in need of workers, women were recruited to serve in these positions. Any initial resistance to hiring women for men's work was quickly forgotten as drafting through conscription made women even more crucial to working at the home front. Over the course of the war, 200,000 women took up jobs in governmental departments, 500,000 took up clerical positions in private offices, 250,000 worked in agricultural positions. 700,000 women took up posts in the munitions industry. In July 1914, before the war broke out, there were 3.2 million women in employment. This had risen to 5 million by January 1918. Before the onset of war, there were few women who worked as nurses and even fewer who worked as doctors. However, the war marked a turning point where many more women began to train and work in medicine and education. There was also a rise in the number of women taking jobs in offices. Their duties were mainly limited to small administrative tasks. Others worked in cotton factories where some of the roles involved labor-intensive work. Women prepared the cotton fiber for spinning and worked on weaving machines. The larger machines were thought to be too heavy for women to operate and were mostly worked by men. Women's pay was lower than men's, even when they were doing the same work. However, many working women were better off than they had been in the past. Women who took job in munitions factories, for example, were better paid than they had been in their previous jobs of sewing clothes or cleaning houses. Women also played a more direct role in the conflict closer to the front lines. By the end of the war, American military women had served stateside and overseas on the eastern and western war fronts. Over 200 bilingual civilian telephone operators, organized and trained by at and took the same oath of allegiance as male soldiers. Dubbed the Hello Girls, they maintained communications in 75 French localities, sometimes working under combat conditions. And from the outset of World War I, long before the American troops arrived on foreign soil, American women were over there volunteering with civilian organizations to provide nursing, transportation, and other war relief services. Women aligned themselves with humanitarian organizations, such as the American Red Cross, YMCA, Salvation Army, and others to meet wartime needs. During the First World War, approximately 6,000 Russian women became combatant. This experience was unprecedented, far surpassing previous or contemporary examples. More significantly, Russia was the only country to employ women systematically in sexually segregated military formations. Although contemporary observers acknowledge their role and the female soldiers became media stars in the domestic and foreign presses, they have largely been forgotten by history. They were pushed aside by subsequent historiography for a number of reasons, the most prominent being that they ended up on the losing side of October 1917. A famous Russian woman, Maria Bakareva, went to war after asking for and receiving personal permission from Tsar Nicholas II. Bakareva was wounded many times but kept fighting and earned a number of awards and promotions. Eventually, she led an all-female battalion that excelled at the front lines. She was ultimately executed by the Bolsheviks while trying to put together a women's medical unit. Another notable woman is Edith Cavill, who stated, Patriotism is not enough. I must have no hatred or bitterness towards anybody. A British nurse who ran a Belgian clinic, she saved many lives on both sides. She also managed to smuggle nearly 200 British, French, and Belgian soldiers and military-age men out of Belgium, which was occupied by the Germans. When the plot was discovered, Cavell was put on trial by the German government and executed, despite worldwide outrage. 
Her death caused shockwaves, sparked a surge in British recruitment, and made her a martyr. Life for women changed dramatically during the war because so many men were away fighting. Many women took paid jobs outside the home for the first time. By 1918, there were five million women working in Britain. The money they earned contributed to the family's budget, and earning more money made working women more independent. Many enjoyed the companionship of working in a factory, office, or shop, rather than doing piecework at home. With men away at war, many women ran their homes alone. They cared for children and older relatives, managed money, and often had a job as well. Shopping during wartime was hard with food and coal shortages and higher prices. The average food bill for a family of four rose from less than one year a week in 1914 to over two years a week in 1918. World War I influenced many women all around the world. In 1918, British women over 30 obtained their voting rights. Two years later, in 1920, the United States granted voting rights for women over 30 as well. By 1950, women could vote in 69 countries, and by 1975, women could vote in as many as 129 countries. Clearly, as a result of the total war experienced during World War I, women became much more heavily involved in the military and industry of their country and, along with gaining more rights, attained better social and economic standing. Women were better able to work in many areas they previously could not be employed in and made higher wages.